getting your very first customer can be one of the most intimidating things that you can ever do as a business owner or as a new salesperson. In this video, I'm just going to share what exactly we did to get our very first customers last year in October. For those that don't know, my name is Kenneth Ntende and over the last 10 years, all I have been doing is helping businesses within their sales and marketing processes. So every once in a while, I want to talk to people that are just starting out so they get to understand what exactly they can do in order to get their first sales. I'll be breaking down the five steps that we went through to get our very first sale when we launched Tremby last year. So let's get started. The first step we had to kind of resolve was how do we sell? Now, there are two kinds of organizations. They are what they call marketing-driven organizations and they are what they call sales-driven organizations. What's the difference? Now, marketing-driven organizations are companies that are largely product-based where their sales process is not that long. I mean, as an example, if I, if I were selling shoes or Coca-Cola, I don't need to explain much when it comes to my sale. All I do is run ads to attract people into my store, onto my website. And as long as you have the size, there is not much explanation there. It's, that's what they call marketing driven. All you do is double down the money in marketing, marketing, marketing. Whereas a sales driven organization, this includes mostly service best businesses. I mean, as an example, if you're running an accounting company, even if you invested a million dollars in adverts, it's not the advert that helps you close the business. It's after the leaders come in, you're scheduling the meetings, you're checking in again, you're following up, you're following up, sending proposals. That is what eventually brings you the money. So the first step was to figure out where do we fall? Are we the kind of business that will just run adverts and people will come and buy from us? We quickly figured out that no, we were not that. We were more service driven and we had to abide by the same processes. Now, when you understand that, you need to make investments in two things. Yes, you need the ads and to distribute your voice and get people aware. Yes, but you need to equally invest within this process of selling. I'm meaning I'm getting the lead, I'm following up, I'm doing all those logistics. Which brings us to the second thing that we did. Step number two was actually quite simple. It was intended to help us understand how much work we need to do to be able to get that first sell. So one thing I've come to appreciate is sometimes we don't really understand how much we need to put in in order to even just get that one sell. As an example, you will talk to a few sales guys and they'll tell you at this month, I have talked to 10 people. Keep in mind that sales is a percentages game. Meaning, when you talk to 10, say your percentage of success is 5%. It means that the month will end without you getting any single sale. Now, I had to put it quickly in my mind just to try and understand man, how many people do I need to have talked to to get this one sale. From the numbers I gave myself, to be honest, I put my success rate at 2% to five percent meaning in order to get one sale i needed to literally talk to about 50 to 100 people just to get that one sale now why that step is very important is because this brain of ours works in a funny way without you giving it that this is your target and this is what we're fighting to achieve it's not going to know how much work to do and it's going to live in this state where you don't you don't really have the motivation to work and get to that number because you do not even know the number in the first place. So that was the second thing I did. I just set up a target that, you know what, for me to get my one sale, I'm going to need to have talked to at least 50 people. So that brought me to thing number three, asking myself, okay, um, what is our process? In step three, we actually resolved just three things. Number one, where are we going to get the leads from? Luckily, we already had that system. We had that trendy AI, which was going to pick for us contacts of all the people we were looking for. Step number two was what are we going to tell these people? The what are we going to tell these people was coming in different formats, sometimes via email, sometimes via SMS, sometimes via call. 
I needed to understand what exactly we were going to say. And the third step, which was personally my most important, is how do we follow up? Keep in mind when you're selling to B2B, it's not like B2C. B2B is you're selling to businesses, meaning you'll talk to so-and-so, you'll talk to his manager, which manager will talk to the CEO. So you're dealing with many people. Now, follow-up becomes important because with every step you take, there's another meeting, another way forward that has to be resolved. So that was the third step that we had to resolve. So the fourth thing we had to resolve was how do we pitch initially to be honest i also didn't know how i was supposed to sell the pitch is when you have a meeting and now you're talking to someone about what you do and why they should buy from you it looks obvious until someone asks you're an accounting firm and the guy tells just tells you tell me about you why should i consider you in most scenarios you as if know what you do but it's only until you sit down and properly understand how you are supposed to tell your business's story that you truly begin to actually sell the pitch is what you rehearse most of the time whenever you meet someone on the road whenever you have a meeting it's what you're pitching selling your company is what they refer to as pitching and for my case at the beginning i was really bad because uh, it started by doing things like telling people about AI, telling people about technology, and we quickly realized that, man, people are not even concerned about technology. We switched it over and now started talking about the problem that they have and how this technology is helping them. So the tech became secondary. I noticed people, especially in my country, where I'm a bit, they, they don't like tech. Eh? They are a bit hesitant when you mention tech things. It, in their heads, they imagine it's a lot of work. So Step number four is just to figure out what does that pitch look like. Well, I was able to actually sit down for about a week, practice, 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 and eventually got it, got it right. And the final step, which I think was one of the most important things, we started selling before the product was even properly ready. One thing I've come to appreciate is you can never be ready, especially in our technology things. So just start talking to people, tell people sell to them sell to them the vision in fact if they give you money you'll end up in a situation where you now have to force your team to deliver the results and the product faster because now you have actual money so those were all the five things that i did to help me get to this point where i was able to close myself now fortunate enough i started making these phone calls phone calls and it was only on until the 19th call where actually someone called me into their office and said you know what here is the money here have and get started but it was after me first structuring these things it's sales is look at it more or less like a sport i mean when you get onto rug into the rugby field yes you can get on and play the way you want but it's going to be much better if you have some kind of structure some kind of plan some kind of tools to help you do your work much better so get to understand what those tools are get to understand how you're doing it and in case you're looking for someone to just guide you on man i'm getting started i'm starting to sell what exactly do i need to do talk to someone like myself give me a call i'll give you my 20 30 minutes we literally talk through it because that simple advice I'm going to give you is going to save you millions and months of time in trying to figure things out on your own. So piggyback on the experiences that we have and get to understand how this can work for your brand as well. Don't forget, I share a ton of content on sales and marketing. Now, if you'd like to learn all the seven ways that you can get sales for your business, I did a video. It's available right here in the corner for those of you that are on YouTube. And for those that want to check out my, maybe my TikTok on my LinkedIn, just visit my profile and I will have tagged it among the top videos. Check that out. Bye-bye for now.